to my channel, my name is Florence. Today we're going to be talking about the Oxalis triangularis, otherwise known as the false shamrock plant or the burgundy butterfly plant. As you can see they get absolutely massive and they're just a really beautiful different plant to have in your home to break up some greenery. The leaves are this lovely dark purple with an inner purple triangle on each leaf and they get these really beautiful pink lilac-y flowers which don't smell of anything but just add a little more colour to your home. Now if I pick this up you can actually see just how massive it is and they do tend to face towards the light so as you can see today this one has been facing you're right by the window so this one's been facing towards you so I do have to turn it regularly as you can see here they get a bit bald in certain areas. I'm just going to plop it here while I talk about it. This plant is actually perfect for beginners or anybody who likes to overwater. It's native to southern South America and tends to be found in the shady areas. It can tolerate bright sunlight from zones A to 11 and if you're in the UK this is a perfect indoor plant. I'm sure that you could have it outside as long as it wasn't in the bright sun all day. I have this in a bright southwest window. All day it gets direct sun and has absolutely no problem with it. One thing I will say though is not to have it too close to the window. These little leaves are like petals and they can get squished against the window and are really tricky to peel off without damaging. I mean obviously it's absolutely fine but if you want an intact plant and you want to be able to open your windows and move the plants then I recommend having it a few feet back. If you've not got a south window that's absolutely fine as long as they're in bright sun. You know it doesn't have to be direct, it can be indirect and they will still grow, they might just get a bit leggy. The really cool thing about this plant is that the leaves close up during the night so as soon as the sun goes down the leaves close inwards and as do the flowers as well and you'll see that as the day progresses and the sun moves around, this, you know, around your house the leaves will follow it. I'll insert a time lapse here because they're really cool. Watering, I'd say I water this about every two days. So, like I said, it is really brilliant for those who like to overwater or have a tendency to overwater. I fertilise this with Baby Bio. It's a common house plant fertiliser that you can get here in the UK. I'll insert the measurements on the screen now of what I use. Make sure to water it and then add the fertilised water so that you're not burning the bulbs or any roots. And it seems to work really well as you can see. Soil wise I have this in about 80% potting compost and 20% perlite. They were like a well draining soil. I will just quickly say that I've got this in a plastic pot inside the terracotta pot just so that I don't have to water it that much more often. This is my second year of growing oxalis and when I bought it it was maybe 17 or so different leaves and only about five bulbs. Throughout the growing season you will get flowers or stems that tend to dry up and you just pick them out and put them in a bin and it's perfectly fine. That's completely normal. These plants do go dormant in the winter so as soon as the leaves start dying back you just chop them all off or you can wait until all of the leaves have shriveled up so that energy goes back into the bulbs place them in a cold dark corner of your home whether that's a cupboard or outside in the greenhouse and in spring they'll come back alive and as soon as you see those first starts of growth that's when you want to water it. If it gets to about March and you haven't seen any new growth you can dig them back out of the soil 
and wash them in lukewarm water. This tends to give them a bit of a wake up. I had to do this with this particular plant um, this year because it just wasn't waking up and I wanted that full purple pop of colour back in my home. If it gets to about October and you've found that your plant isn't dying back, don't worry, they don't all go dormant. So it is fine, it will just have less energy, so it might get a bit leggier for the next year. So like I stated before, these grow from bulbs. They're not big round bulbs, they're much more like a little finger or a crooked finger. And they're slightly pink and if you break one in half you don't necessarily have to worry, you just plant them both and it could become two separate plants. Another really cool thing is you can propagate this in several different ways. So you can do dividing of the bulbs, so as soon as they go dormant you can pick those bulbs out, plonk them in another pot or cut the bulbs. Um, another way you can do it is to cut a stem. Now I'd recommend no more than three inches of stem and just put it in water. This will grow roots in about three to four weeks and as soon as you've got those roots established enough, plant them in well draining soil and within six to 12 weeks you'll have a full plant. That again will go dormant in the winter, but don't worry, just leave it in its pot, let it die off and it'll come back healthy next year and a lot bigger. In the UK you can find these as outdoor plants and they cost maybe around seven pounds at top range. You will tend to find them now in house plant shops as they're becoming a lot more popular. Um, but I really wouldn't recommend paying over £14 for these as you can probably get the bulbs off eBay for about £3 each. I think this pot is made up now of about 12 bulbs so you can see just how much that generates. It's a type of wood sorrel and that means that it's edible. Although I've never tried it, you can put the leaves in salads and I'm sure that it tastes absolutely lovely but for me this is just the perfect houseplant. And there are several other types of oxalis out there. I'll put all of these on the screen. Got creeping wood sorrel, which is much more like a clover and doesn't get as leggy as this. It tends to crawl along the floor. You have oxalis depii, I think it's called. So their bulbs are a little different. They've got some growing here and a little oxalis flower, which I'll just plonk back in the pot. Um, their bulbs are a bit different, they're more acorn shaped and grow really quickly so I planted these two days ago. I'll insert some footage once they actually start sprouting leaves. But they get a lot more leggy as well, they have a different growing pattern to this. And they're just absolutely stunning. There's also Oxalis Plum Crazy, which are a really beautiful mixture of, you know, purples and pinks, but they are a lot more difficult to get hold of. They're a lot more delicate than this, believe it or not, and they tend to get a bit leggy too. Their flowers are a bright yellow, which is really impressive and just a really stark contrast to every other houseplant you can have in your home. I'm just editing now and I managed to find myself an Oxalis valdiviensis. I have no idea whether I'm saying that right, but these are too good not to include. It's a fully green Oxalis with these incredible yellow flowers. For me, this is a must-have plant. I think no plant collection is complete without it. And again, like I said, you can either have it as a house plant or a bedding plant outside. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you've got any more helpful advice for other people trying to grow oxalis in their home, leave it in the comments. And again, if you like this video, subscribe for more houseplant content. Bye. Um. Nice.